Hi, this is the second part in a series of videos on describing the relationship between two quantitative variables. In the video on the first part, we looked at scatter plots to figure out what the form and direction of the relationship is. And if from the scatter plot we determine the form is approximately linear, we can go ahead and ask ourselves how strong the relationship is. In statistics, we use a measure for the strength of the relationship, and that's the correlation coefficient R. The R of STAT web app, scatter plots and correlation, computes this correlation coefficient, and I'm going to show it to you in a second on the data set we used in the first part of the video. So I'm going to share my screen and go to the artofstat.com website. I'll click on the web apps and then I'll scroll down to get to the section on association, correlation and regression and click on the scatter plots and correlation apps. Correlation app. Now this will bring up the same data set I showed you before plotting the relationship between internet use and Facebook use of various countries of 37 countries. Uh, we see an approximate linear relationship and hence is useful to describe the strength of the relationship. How strong are internet use and Facebook use related, correlated? We see the table here that gives the Pearson correlation coefficient, often just called R, and it's equal to 0.61. The most important thing you have to know about the correlation is that it lives between negative one and one. The closer it is to either of those sides, the closer it is to negative one or positive one, the stronger the linear relationship. A correlation coefficient close to zero indicates no relationship. We also see that the correlation coefficient is positive. That's no surprise because the direction of the relationship is positive. Let me show you an example of a negative correlation coefficient that's actually stronger. Remember the gas mileage and uh, weight scatter plot I showed you last time. So we plot weight of cars on the x-axis, their gas mileage on the y-axis. We see a clear negative relationship that also is approximately linear. The correlation coefficient for this relationship is negative because of the negative direction, negative 0.87. So an actually stronger in terms of absolute value, stronger relationship than the one between Facebook and internet use we see that if we click on the trend line here, that the points tend to cluster more closely to that line. Let's look at an example where the correlation coefficient is roughly zero, is close to zero. I showed you the, the Tour de France uh, data set before, which has on the x-axis a standardized performance measure, uh, the finishing time, that the time trials and so forth, and on the y-axis, the attractiveness of the 80 riders that took part in the Tour de France. We see, if we remove the trend line, that there doesn't seem to be much of a relationship. This just seems like a cloud of points and the correlation coefficient is pretty small, 0.24. A negative sign because there is a slight negative trend, but it is much closer to zero than either of the other two examples I showed you. Using the correlation coefficient only makes sense if you have approximate linear relationships. Let's look at the, a scatter plot that shows a clear nonlinear relationship. I also showed you this in the first video. The relationship between the steady driving speed of a car and its fuel efficiency is not linear. It's increasing, but then decreasing, where the sweet spot seems to be around 40 miles per hour. Now, if you didn't look at the scatter plot, but just, would just judge the strength of the association or of the relationship based on the correlation coefficient, you would assume that's a pretty weak relationship of only 0.1. Very weak correlation, very low correlation coefficient, pretty close to zero. Yet, in fact, if you look at the scatter plot, the relationship is very strong. It's strong, but not linear. We can't use the correlation coefficient to describe the strength of nonlinear relationships. Finally, another important point to make is the correlation coefficient is heavily influenced by outliers. I'm going to show you another new example that plots the votes in the presidential election that the independent candidate got in 1996 compared to 2000. In 1996, Ross Perot was the independent candidate 
and in 2000, Pat Buchanan was the independent candidate. And the dots here refer to the 67 Florida counties and how they voted in 1996 and in 2000 for the independent candidate. We see a clear linear relationship, the higher the number of votes for the independent candidate in one county in 1996, the higher the number of votes for the independent candidate in 2000. Yet, we can include a link trend line to see that trend more clearly, yet there seems to be one country that is a clear outlier. And that's the county, the Florida county of Palm Beach. Based on the number of votes for the independent candidate in 1996, we would expect the number of votes for the independent candidate in 2000 to be around here if it follows the trend of all the other 66 Florida counties. Yet Palm Beach had a much larger than we would expect number of votes for the independent candidate in 2000. This is an outlier. It is far removed from the trend of all the other counties. The correlation coefficient for this original data is 0.71, pretty strong. But let's see how that correlation coefficient changes when we actually change this one outlier. I clicked on enabling dragging or deleting points, which allows me to drag that point and see what would happen to the correlation coefficient if that Palm Beach County had, a, had an observation that was about here. So fewer votes than actually observed. Note how the correlation gets much stronger, 0.78 now, up from 0.71. And if we drag the county here to be in line with what the trend would be, we would yet get a much stronger correlation of 0.92. This shows you how this single point had a huge effect on the correlation coefficient. Removing that point, dragging it completely out of the picture, we get a correlation of also around 0.92. And that will probably be the correlation I would report for the relationship between number of votes in 1996 and number of votes in 2000 for the in independent candidate. Uh, I removed that outlier, outlier because Palm Beach County just seemed to go against the general trend. This is it. This is part two of a series of videos. In a third part, we're going to look a little bit behind the formula on the correlation coefficient and explain how it's computed.